Okay guys, um, I'm back, it's been a few days, you know, the premiere for The Walking Dead Season 9 happened a few days ago, and, you know, Season 9 is off to a great start, um, but this is not what this video is about, uh, this video is about The Walking Dead novels. Now, I have gone over the novels a few times on my channel. In my comic collection video, I showed the novels, and in my video series, which was kind of a series, it was like a two-part series I did, like one was focusing on everything that is canon to the comic universe and everything that is canon to the TV universe. This is going to go over the books, not the comic books, but the novels of The Walking Dead. Now, as... Um, to date, there are eight novels and one short story. These include the first novel, which is Rise of the Governor. Then there's a short story that is after Rise of the Governor called Just Another Day at the Office. Then after that we have novel two, which is The Road to Woodbury. Novel three, which is The Fall of the Governor Part 1. Book 4, which is The Fall of the Governor Part 2. Part 5, which is Descent. Part 6, which is Invasion. Part 7, which is Search and Destroy. And in Part 8, which is Return to Woodbury. Now, I recently watched an interview between uh, Primatrix1986 and the author of the books, J. Bonansinga. That's how I pronounce his name, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. And uh, there's something I've been wondering for a while, because I remember, and I'm not going <laughs> to lose track, because if you watch my channel, you know I ramble on about other stuff, but um, when the novels were first, I remember hearing this, although it could just be, maybe that wasn't true, maybe it's something else, but... Um, Originally, it's like Robert Kirkman and J. Bond Singer were to do four novels based on The Walking Dead. Rise of the Governor, Road to Woodbury, and Fall of the Governor, Parts 1 and 2. And then after those four books were done, then J. Bond and Singer would continue on for four more books, which are Descent, Invasion, Search and Destroy, and Return to Woodbury. I remember hearing something like that, but maybe I didn't... Maybe someone got wrong information, I don't know. And Return to Woodbury itself, before that book came out, I was wondering, would this be the end of the series? And Return to Woodbury does kind of... It kind of ends. Like, it doesn't have, like, a cliffhanger ending. It kind of has, like, a... This is the finale. And... Yeah, so... But there are still a couple of questions left unanswered. So I was wondering, are there ever going to be any other novels? Uh, and then when, um, let's see, Skybound started their book division, I was hoping maybe that might be them making more Walking Dead novels. But in the interview with uh, Primatrix1986, Jay Bonasinga said something very, very interesting. Uh, Prime Matrix 1986 asked him the question I wanted to ask him like the whole time, which was, "Will there be any more novels?" I'm so fucking happy he asked that because I really want to know. Um, and Jay Bonasinga said he couldn't say anything, which you know, like that's the answer you're kind of used to hearing from uh, people. But he just flat out said there will be more, so that got me fucking excited. They probably won't be about Lily. But, and not Lily from the game, Lily the character from the novels and the comic. So, you know, we might focus on other characters. So I'm excited to see that, maybe we can get a Whisperers book, I'd fucking love to know more about the Whisperers backstory. And now is the perfect time, you know? I feel, you know, like, spoiler alert for the comics, but the Whisperers are done in the comic now. So now is a good time to just, you know, bring you up to speed on the past of them. Because, like, the Governor books started coming out a few years after the character in the comics died. Um, but anyway, back to the main discussion. 
Jay Bon and Singa took over as like the main person working on Descent onwards because I think the reason like Robert Kirkman was really involved with the first four books in particular was because they were intertwined with the comic story even with a bit of crossover in it and I'm five minutes into the series and I haven't even gotten to the books themselves individually yet so I have every book I've read every single one of them I'm a huge fan of the books, I, I freaking love them. And one thing that is really upsetting about being a novel fan is there are near to no videos about the novels on YouTube. Like you might get a few about Rise of the Governor, but like Return to Woodbury and Search and Destroy, like those ones have nothing. Like just them like doing the cover. Like you know when they take the photo for the cover. But, the novels themselves individually, what are they about? Now, first thing of note is, these books are in the comic universe. This is the comic version of the Governor, the comic version of Rick, the comic version of Glenn, the comic version of Lily. So, just to let you know that as a heads up. So what is Rise of the Governor about? Well, the Governor in the comic book, you did not have much time where it was going over his backstory. In fact, you never really knew anything about his backstory. And Rise of the Governor follows the Governor who, you know, goes, you know, whose second name is Blake. You know, we know the Governor as Philip Blake in the comics. That's what we heard. And it follows the Blake brothers, Brian and Philip. And of course, Penny, who is the governor's zombie daughter. And I'm going to try to stay spoiler free when it comes to the novels because I really want you guys checking them out. Um, this will contain spoilers for the comics though. So, there is a warning to that. Um... Rise of the Governor doesn't just follow the Blake Brothers, but it follows a few of uh, Philip's friends, like Bobby Marsh, Nick Parsons, and we see how certain things transpire. We see how the Governor gets to Woodbury. We see why the Governor becomes a fucked up person. And it's really interesting. It's a really great novel. Um, a little thing I do want to get into in this book is there is such a cool connection to the comic book pretty early on in the book about a third through it where the characters hide out in this um, neighborhood and the neighborhood is called Wiltshire Estates and when the place becomes overrun with walkers the governor and you know all of the people in the group leave the Wilshire estates and before they leave Brian puts up this sign basically saying all dead do not enter that is the same sign Rick saw in volume 2 of the comic books in issue number 9 I'm pretty sure like we see it at the end of issue number 8 as the cliffhanger I think but Rick sees it in issue 9 but yeah that is cool how the governor's group basically helped Rick's group out uh, I just think that's cool we meet uh, a bunch of characters on the way to Woodbury well maybe not a bunch but a few but if you want to know more about the story, there's an episode of the Walking Dead TV show called um, Live Bait. Remember those two episodes of the Governor in the TV show we got before the Too Far Gone episode? The Live Bait, Dead Weight, the two episodes there? Live Bait, the, the episode where the Governor finds that um, family you know, like Tara and Lily. That is basically the show's version of Rise of the Governor, but with a lot of differences. 
But yeah, Rise of the Governor is a fantastic novel. I would say it's definitely a must read for Walking Dead fans because it gives you history on the governor. It's kind of like the Here's Negan book, which gave you the backstory on Negan. This gives you the backstory on the governor, and I hope we get backstory on the Whisperers as well, Alpha and Beta. Um, next up is Just Another Day at the Office. Now, Just Another Day at the Office takes place immediately after Rise of the Governor. And it basically shows how the governor became so trusted, became the leader of Woodbury, why people looked up to him. Not much to go over. Uh, if you want to find this, it's included in the first issue of the Walking Dead official magazine. And I think it's a uh, digital download you can get as well for the book. It's a very short book. It's about the length of a chapter in the full books. At least that's what the wiki says. But I have read all this stuff. But, uh, yeah. That's really all you need to know besides going into spoilers. Because I really don't want to. Road to Woodbury uh, is the next book. And in this book we see how the governor got his name, uh, when he grew out the hair and the moustache, stuff like that, and yeah, we basically get stuff like that. This book also introduces Lily, and we get her backstory, we even get Bob Stuckey's backstory, the doctor that nursed the governor back to health. And this book is also a really great backstory for Lily. You find out a lot about her. Because, you know, this was like... Lily was a random character that showed up, killed Lori and Judith, and then killed the governor. It's not Michonne that kills the governor. It's not Rick. It's not Andrea. It's not Glenn. It's not Dale. It's not Tyrese. You know, well, obviously Tyrese dies by that point. But... It's Lily, a character you don't even know. All you know is her name, Lily. This book, you know, get lets you know this character. And it makes that issue rewarding, like even more rewarding, you could say. Because now you can, now it's kind of like Lily finally got her revenge on the governor. Because Road to Woodbury is... Basically, like, in this book, Lily constantly, you know, has bad stuff happen to her at the town of Woodbury. Like, shit happens. People she know dies. Really bad shit happens. And she sees the governor for what he is. A truly evil bastard. Even tries killing him near the end of it in a really cool, like, few chapters. Um... And by that point, it's it's just really cool seeing that how it all transpires. So yeah, I don't want to. As I said, I don't want to get into full spoilers. So, the fall of the governor, part one, is where the comic connections get really fucking big. The first book gave you the backstory on the governor. The second book gave you the backstory on Lily. Now it's time to kill the governor. So the fall of the governor part one is, it takes place around volume five and six of the comic book. Where we see like when Rick, Glenn and Michonne enter Woodbury in the comic book, but we see it through the governor and Lily's point of view. And it's really cool. And in this volume, Lily meets this guy called Austin Ballard, who she grows a connection with. It's a pretty nice relationship they have, you know, they they do dates basically. <laughs> and uh yeah, it's it's a really good relationship and seeing this is just it's really cool revisiting this story from the comic book but through a different character's point of view I think that is really cool how they did that and then Fall of the Governor Part 2 
is basically like volume 7 and 8. So you see how Woodbury was doing while the governor was healing after his encounter with Michonne. And this volume gives you a good reason as to why the people, you know, stood with the governor. They didn't, you know, ask questions. Like, there was one thing I forgot to mention about the fall of the governor. That's also when the governor manages to get Lily onto his side. So that's why she, you know, immediately didn't try killing him in the comic book. But in the Fall of the Governor Part 2 we see the governor's healing process, we see how Woodbury is doing, why he's healing, and then we get the epic prison battle from the comic book through the Woodbury people point of view. And it it basically the books do a good job making it seem like Rick's group are the bad people. Like look what they did to our leader. He's missing an eye, he's missing an arm, you know, like he's being mutilated. They killed our doctor. You know, it's it's crazy, like you know, obviously we know that the doctor Doctor Stevens was gonna join them, but he died on the way. Also I think it's either the fall of the governor part one or two. Can't, I'm not really sure but um No, it's part two, I'm I'm almost positive that um, another connection to the comic happens and it answers a question the comic never answered. There's a character in volume 3 and 4 of the comic books called Andrew, he's one of the prisoners. And after Dexter dies, Andrew runs out of the prison and we never see him again. Well the book ex basically lets you know that he did die, he turned, and then Lily puts him down. So it's cool that they did tie up that loose end. I'm really happy about that. So, yeah. And by the end of this book, we see what happens to Lily and her group after the prison battle finishes. And we see what happens to the town of Woodbury. Descent picks up... Actually, let me uh, just go back a tiny bit. At the end of The Fall of the Governor part two a new family joins Woodbury the Dupree family and this basically kicks off where Descent kicks in where Lily is now the main main character of this series and she's basically trying to take the bad out of Woodbury make Woodbury an actual good place but while this is going on and the new families joining Woodbury, there is this new guy called Jeremiah James Garlitz, who's a preacher, who is, let's just say, he's not very nice. And he is the most underrated villain in The Walking Dead history, I gotta say. You know, people talk about Negan and the governor, and yes, Negan is the best villain in The Walking Dead, hands down. But Jeremiah James Garlitz was a great villain. I just want to say that. And this basically leads to them losing Woodbury. I know I'm kind of going to spoilers, but I'm not telling you everyone who dies. Because I'm the only characters I've told you that die are characters you know are dead from the comic books. An invasion is when they basically try to take back Woodbury and also try to take down Jeremiah James Garlitz. Search and Destroy is a basically four years in, so there's a bit of a time skip between Invasion and Search and Destroy. And in this book, they're up against these new people, basically like a hospital looking for a cure. So if anyone likes the cure stuff about The Walking Dead, Search and Destroy is good, but I will tell you this, they don't find a cure. And that's that. <laughs> Uh, they even go back into Atlanta in this storyline, so if you guys miss Atlanta, Search and Destroy's got you covered. And, yeah. Also, um, the Dupree family I mentioned a while ago, the old, uh, the eldest son, Tommy Dupree, is one of the best characters ever. He's a kid character, you may say, oh god, a kid character. A kid character in The Walking Dead, no less. He is up there with Carl and Clementine as a great kid character in The Walking Dead. He really, really is. 
and search and destroy I just wanted to add that there because he is a great character search and destroy overall is a pretty awesome book they're all awesome books so search and destroy is basically like them going to well uh, there's a couple other things I want to add first um because it's all over the place in this book they're also sorting out um a, like fixing up a train so they can go in and out of Atlanta for supplies and stuff I'm pretty sure that was the reason kind of like what Eugene is actually doing right now in the newest issue of The Walking Dead as of this recording it's issue 184 Eugene Tinkers so that's cool so the novels did that a bit earlier than the comic books but that's okay that's still cool um, Next up with that as well is that uh, Woodbury has joined with other communities as well. So yeah, uh, we, I'm saying that a lot. So yeah, so yeah. <laughs> but the characters do um, find more like people in Atlanta that, you know, these people that are looking for a cure are not good people. They're basically taking the children of Woodbury so they can experiment on them. And as for Return to Woodbury, this picks up a little while after Search and Destroy where they're living at this, uh, I think it was a Walmart they were living at. And in this book called Return to Woodbury, well, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to return to Woodbury in this book. And this book is like the climactic ending to the novel franchise, ending with some sad moments, but with a happy enough ending happy in terms of walking dead for walking dead standards it's pretty happy um but even though lily's not in every book she's not in uh, rise of the governor and just under day at the office and the governor stops appearing in the books after a fall of the governor part two there is one constant in every single one of these books woodbury itself is in every single book it's in the just another day at the office it's a constant in this whole series and overall every single book and the short story are all fantastic it's a brilliant series I highly recommend them you can get these books really cheap as well like these books are not expensive like hunt them down read them if you're a fan because these add hours to Walking Dead entertainment. These books will take you a few hours to read and they are great. These books, I absolutely love them. They are fantastic. But, yeah, I basically just wanted to explain the basic outline of the series and uh, I don't want to go into too many spoilers. There are a few big things I left out, a few small things I left out. Some for spoilers, some because I just remember them now, and some because I just want to. I don't want to say everything about them, because the back of the books basically tell you what you need to know as well. But I'm just telling you that's the order they're in, and here's everything in this sub subsection of the franchise, and whether or not I think you should read them. Uh, do I think you should read them? Fuck yeah, they are brilliant. And whatever Jay Bon and Singer has coming up with The Walking Dead, I'm definitely going to buy it and I'm definitely going to read it. Whether it's about the Whisperers, it's continuing Lily's story, it's about a different character, it's about a brand new character altogether. It's a mix of both new characters and old characters. I don't mind, I'm going to read it. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. See ya. Hey guys, I wanted to say that the Governor special takes place in the middle of the road to Woodbury. As in halfway through the book, there is a short time skip and when it comes back, one of the characters is missing. Well, the Governor special explains what happens to that character. Anyway, I just wanted to add that, I just wanted to add that in there. Thanks guys, see ya.